Hello and welcome to my King Let's Play. Or Ching, I've been told it's pronounced different ways. Oh, I'll call it Ching from now on. But we're going ahead and we're doing a quick little reload. Uh, because the events didn't prop, uh, fire properly and we were stuck with Zeely Cleek being in charge instead of uh, our friend here, Pu Yi. So we're going to start off with normal research for industry and for research speed and we're going to get a bunch of sieves being produced let's see um build here because it's whoa build here because it's easy all right free dockyards go one convoy submarines and we'll start off with the year of the rat no divisions of basic training national infantry division all right everything's good and we'll go ahead and press play so we're going to skip over these events because uh, we read them in the uh, last one Political situation, River rights, Krinsky's dead. Restructuring our debt. We could get some increased uh, popularity if we want. Okay, we're selling the railroad, which causes all the problems. Let's, uh, I guess, new taxes. Attacks on foreigners. Woohoo woo incident. Annoy breaks free. Courage export farming. Governor of Shadong was arrested. Whoa, okay. Leadership crisis with deepening leadership crisis. For this war, senior member of the Zealy Pekin Major Ally of Falcon passed away. Alright. Forget. Did we. Let's send supplies and no funds for rebels. You have a bunch of gun. Offer to help Chin. Nope, too risky. Let's go ahead while we have the ability to to just go ahead. Whoa. And just make a bunch of infantry divisions so they're out. Export farming done. The emergency meeting. Bloodbath. Lose nightmare. We lose our navy. Marshal Marshal Key refusing our offer of chin telegram. This is arrived from. Yeah, I think we side with no one. Black Monday, uprising, the emergency meeting, we need to be careful. Deal with unrest. Okay, we just need to get more. Southern governors cut contact. Leon Gun breaks free. Widespread rioting. Hunan secedes. It's 
Civil War in Sichuan. Oh, there we go. Young Cinema Quest Support. Dire News. Sir Strength. Wu Feifu abandons them. Okay, we'll work on dealing with the unrest. Nope, we have more pressing concerns. I mean, if they take in King, no, they're they're too far away. I think they're. Oh God. <laughs> that political power situation is doing great. Lindenburg of the East. Lindenburg of the East. Cool, we'll get more resource speed. Yeah, these, this entire area, I guess I should say this entire area is not really known for uh, good uh, good technology. Right, the Civil War in Sichuan has ended. Our allies in the Armament Department is defeated by the Boding Department fleeing possible retribution by then. Old friends are always welcome here. Sure. I don't think that's siding with them taking refugees in. I think we should be fine. Whispers of discontent. Longwood's decision not to intervene in the LEP collapse. Small groups from across the political spectrum begin together in secret. Initially limiting, criticizing Wu's inaction, and worsening violence in the streets have led to many to bring up revolt. Networks between these groups have allowed a shaky coalition to develop compromise of Manchu nobles, cadets in the Boating Academy. For more than the NCRA and some Zili generals annoyed at Wu's in action. The Zulu's group has begun to speak clandestinely with one another to plot to overthrow Wu and restore the Emperor to some degree. Let's keep an eye on this. Let's start training so we can start moving towards getting uh, army reform. Famine breaks out in Sichuan. I believe it's you who has the. Yeah. yeah. That looks fun. Missing equipment, light tanks. Clandestine meeting. In the basement of a shady Beijing bar traditionally used as a cover for revolutionary activities, a string coalition of individuals dedicated to overthrowing the Pei and his rule over China has gathered. First is Puji, the emperor's brother and general in the army, one of the few non Zili generals allowed to command significant numbers of troops. Next to him sits YC James Yen, a leading interpreter and head of the NCRA across the with him, Feng Zhang and Ling Bin, two boating cadets scarcely older than 25. The final member of the meeting is Zili General. He's is a monarchist, but he claims to have assembled a coalition of Zili generals as gruntled with Wu's in action over the last few months. Realizing they are unable to beat the Zili clique on their own, the London military sources and plotted aside the most leader of a neighboring warlord click for assistance. For much liberation, they choose Shang Zi or Shadong. Who do we want? Let's go Shandong, because I think they're more of like the the uh, anti-Japanese group, and I think that fits well with wanting to reclaim our country from the uh, imperialists. Song accepts. Cool. Louis Zing takes control of Sichuan. Our LA, Young Sin and Sichuan, major loss for Zili Clique. Autonomous troop movements. Unusual troop movements moved forth from Shidong's province over the last few days. It appears that a large mob of troops are preparing for some sort of military action on our border, with informants reporting that supplies and equipment are being stockpiled near the mountain passes out of the peninsula. Governor Song technically swore a few visits, but backstabbing is not usual among warlords. Dispatch more spies, more pressing matters to ditch to tend to. I think we want to do that. Uh, 4 to 11, we're fine if something does happen. Alright, basic machine tools can now be replaced with displaced industry.
Not aggression pack with Hunan. Cool. Okay, yeah, we're even more fine with uh, the increased number of troops we're getting. Uh, we don't need a video for trade and resources. We know how that works already. Should be able to get the Manchu Restoration. I don't remember any of these events, which is good. Mysterious occurrences. Marine news that appears the last few days anti Zili and anti German families have been discovered disputed among some of our troops. That's where they received them from, none were able to have a straight answer unless they're saying it disappeared overnight. In more worrying, several Zili generals have dropped out of contact with Liu Yang over the last few hours, notably including Li Bezing, whose monarch sympathies were well known. Even worse, Voting Military Academy appears to have abandoned overnight. The communications with far flung parts of the Empire have been interrupted due to widespread radio and telephone outage. Army Association going down. If I remember, yes, it's the Manchu Party we want in control with the uh, social conservatives. Collapse of the United Baltic Duchy. Ah, that's fine. I think, overall, who we want to do the best, we probably want the Russian Republic to win this. Because they could be fighting Japan with us. The province of Shilong's fog of Putin lifted and a man has emerged. Songs and Song's response for alerting the magistrates to Zhang Zongshan's illegal and inexcusable crimes in Shidong, and it was appointed governor and thanks. Governor Song is inciting the rebellions that are holding back Shidong pleads for the king government to help restore order. Fears that the province may yet be lost to another upstart warlord or lost to the KMT bound. Surely the king would not allow another province to fall away from them. Finally, a governor was sent. We do not trust a former. Huh. No, we want to take. Promises protection. No, we're not siding with them because if we could make them, if that would have made them their puppet, maybe. He summons to Beijing while Wu is attempting to process the 11 developments that have occurred over the last few days. An urgent telegram arrived from Beijing. Kao Kun and Wu have been summoned to meeting with the Emperor over the state of the country. Widespread riots are still daily occurrences, and while the Emperor technically has a constitutional prerogative to summon his president, it has never occurred. While Wu may sense a trap, Kao Kun is already from the Emperor that himself and will be present himself in his. His Ma Imperial Majesty later this week. Damn you, Cao Kun. Wu and Cao prepare to meet Pu Yi. After arriving from Logan, Wu berated Cao for essentially inviting them into a trap. Still, the Jade Marshal is not one to go into a meeting like this without a trump crowd of sleeves. As the men prepare to enter the hall, where his bodyguards wait outside the entrance to the chambers. The of bodyguards outside were unarmed except for traditional swords, and Zili soldiers have hidden pistols from their pockets. They enter the hall. Wu and Cao are killed, the coup succeeds, Manchu bodyguards lie dead on the ground. Right. The two men enter and kneel before the Emperor. Around a dozen heavily armed Manchu guards rush into the room, surrounding the Emperor. They move forward and attempt to arrest the men. While Puyi flees the room, upon hearing the commotion, Wu's bodyguards outside quickly dispatch and ceremonial guards rush in. While Wu and Cao duck behind the pillars to avoid getting hit, bullets fly back and forth among the ancient pillars of the hall, smashing priceless artifacts and wounding Cao Kyun. Bullets stop flying over one side emerge. Wu and Cao are killed, the coup succeeds. The Emperor asserts himself. Pui nervously enters the room, gazing down at the bullet ridden bodies of the formal Jade Marshal movement of President Cao Kun. Fuji and another small group of Manchu guardsmen enter as well. No kind of machine can see us, brother, I believe it's time for you to make a speech. He returns to the corpses and look up. She I begins his voice uncertain. I am not sure if I can do that. She is not to say one another, generally in the Gazili third is burst into the room. My lord, the city is secure. Says Cao telling almost to the ground facing Pui. Bajibala and several other Zili generals have retreated to Liu Yang. They are planning to launch a campaign to destroy us and liberate Beijing. Fuji moves over to Pu Yi and whispers into his ear, You are the emperor now, you must act like one. Pu Yi nervously attempts to gather himself. I, that Zhu Tong Emperor, son of heaven, firmly proclaimed any members of the Zili clique who do not swear fealty to might by tomorrow. No, he cries twice, he's forced to himself, who do not do so by tomorrow noon to be traitors of the great king. Death to the traitors. And we move to uh, Fractured Empire, which is nice. Sparity League dissolves. The people's prosperity gives a 
dissolved hosting their hostile a hostile atmosphere with many of their prominent lobbyists leaving the country. While the German legation remains in Beijing, they have cut this off from the government contact, robbing us of German military and industrial support. The people, however, are overwhelmingly in favor of this move and are praising the new government for putting itself with foreign influences. Nice. Once restoration done, deal with unrest done, destruction done. Alright, time to get more, more people. I guess you, our cavalry. Okay, we're good. Stop training, so we have a good organization. Let's go with here in case a war is about to break out. Oh, here we go, a new focus tree, all right. Secure the North China Plain. While the forces loyal to the coup control Beijing and the area surrounding the Boating Military Academy, the rest of the territory remains under control of the traitor Zili warlord. So we need to first secure the northern frontier, eliminating the Zili garrison there before turning our eyes south. So I think we're going to pick Yes, pick the Manchu party, right? Manchu party obviously dominated by Manchu nobility and Beijing. All this appears to be an odd choice for the ruling party over the last 10 years. The nobles use relative freedom to afford them by Zili, put up large industrial fortunes, investing in a few factories, opening Beijing not under German forms, giving them significant clout. YCP, Young China Party, putting academy cadets. They lack appeal. That's a little bit uh, extreme. NCERA. Powerful party that controls loyalty of both world presidents and sovereign intellectuals. That's cool, but I like the ability to demand that they uh, bend the knee before doing a national. Po yeah, that seems cool. New benefactor. Governor Yun Xi. We'll decide that later. We'll, we'll work on this right now. Secure the North China Plain. The Imperial Coup. Details are unclear, but following a presumed coup in the Forbidden City this morning, Emperor Pui emerged, flanked by his brother Puyi and former Zili general, Li Wan, a noted monarchist. The Emperor has, escalate, has just escaped an attempt on his life from Zili rats. Prince Ludley declared to a group of reporters as Puyi stood motionless, either nearly calm or paralyzed with fear. Wu Pei Fu and his German lackeys of Poisoned our country for the last three decades, that's the Zili. Several minutes later, the lifeless bodies of Wu and Cal were thrown into the street where they were ripped apart by angry mob, burning effigies of the Kaiser, along with the Emperor. Alright, so we're gaining cores and no longer demilitarized zone. That's good. Yeah, and it's a good thing we did produce all of those uh, divisions when we did. For allies send aid. Thank you, friend. Oh my gosh. The League of Eight Provinces is holding up. The Le independence of the League of Eight Provinces is guaranteed by German East Asia. Oh my god. Okay. Restart. Rebuild our command structure. The civil war against Zidium and its left are high command and tatics. Few of those who remain have much loyalty in divisions existing of overall order of battle. We must immediately reunite our forces if we wish to avoid getting our attack. Foreigner against foreigner. Look to our past. We'll look to our past for that. Oh, they're working very closely with the Germans. That's not good. I wonder if this actually becomes a civil war or if this just stays uh, under their control. Why can't I do this when the national unit for Chinese concessions is created? Okay, I guess we're not doing much there. Push the Yellow River, okay.
guess that's just what we use critical power for right now. I find it interesting that they do this through events like this. Radical Buddhists take Mongolia. That's boring. Victory reports have returned to the Imperial Palace. Our troops have reached the Little River. The Skazi League garrisons around Beijing proved to be little match for the booting led army. General Zatsman Chu's assisted in hearing retreat easily troops as they attempted to flee to Longan. Many troops simply deserted to our forces, and they thought of serving a leaderless army with little con concentrated political backing does not really appeal. Forces are now ready to be an assault on Liang We Prefu's stronghold, currently being defended by forces under General. Zhang Bali, you was second in command. Securing this fortress will be the beginning of the end of the Zili Creek. Long live the Son of Heaven. Cool, we're gonna do the assault now. At this point, you know what? Let's just keep, keep training. Let's see, offensive doctrine. Sure. Victory in Lowing. A telegram arrived. This warning from Lingen confirming that our troops were victorious in storming the walls of the fortified city. Following hours of constant artillery bombardment, loyal troops crossed the river and of two barges sustaining heavy fire. Once ashore, however, they quickly secured control over the beachhead, allowing more and more of our troops to land and begin attacking Zigli units scarce in the city. Fighting among the ancient Grodo and temples that dot the city, our troops eventually stormed the Zigli headquarters, killing and while the other generals managed to escape, the Zigli troops scattered throughout the surrounding countryside, looting and pillaging even as they flee our forces, along with the Son of Heaven. Mob up isolated garrisons. New benefactor. This guy, Governor Shadong, has been long winning King Lilas. He wants the monarchy modernized. He also wants tradition and maintaining continuity with our. I think this guy seems cool. Sect command an enormous amount of clout following their religion. Is that if it's not unclear because they lend support? I don't know which one I want. We'll see. We'll see. Alright, and we'll go ahead and do the final push. Following the purge, many senior members of the Zili clique, our army has been left without much of a command structure as well. On Lee, visiting one of our one of the few Zili deserters, and two, a senior princes, Atau, and the Emperor's brother, proceeded to reform the imperial command structure. So not being an easy task, and we and his cronies essentially did away with the modern divisional structure based on the meritocratic promotion in favor of cronies and nepotism. While their forms will take time to implement, they will decide to fill out the thin roster of senior commanders with Feng Zing and Lee Bin. Two young voting cadets who helped over the Zili. Through an experience, I think they'll learn quickly. Cool. And we'll go ahead and... Look for pass, yeah. Seems like it'll work fine. Prince Yu requests a commission when Prince Rui informing the minister to plan the cabinet in 1911 has come to us with a request. Following the promotion of young Kubakers from voting academy, he requests a full naval commission. All this is true, many of our admirals have lingering Zili connections. They are most loyal to us. And despite having traveled extensively to study foreign navies, they never actually committed a ship in battle and are skeptical of the actual naval prowess. Promote him? Of course not. Sure, we'll promote him. Victory and Wu Chang, long live the sun. And all assaultful forces. Also bearing some Zili deserters, finally storming Mulan, destroying the remaining Zili forces and capturing or killing any senior Zili generals. With victory finally secured, we can now start to focus on rebuilding a country and rearing it for both the ravages of conflict we just endured in decades of rampant corruption we were subject to under the Zili. Cool. Overwhelming national debt. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's go ahead and get early mobilization done. Refugees. Sure, we'll take it. Now we can, hmm, if we go down here, what are we getting? Stability, 
Ooh, that's how we get rid of our debt. Let's go for it. Form an emergency government. Now that we have destroyed the remnants of Fazili, pick it is time for the Emperor to pick which of the three parties that form the coalition will rule China. Emergency government. Now that the rule over Beijing is secure, Amazing Gory Pui and his advisors have begun assembling an emergency cabinet to rule China until the country is stable enough for elections to be held. But the three groups that oppose the elite have an issue through from agenda and dedicate support from specific groups of the population. Complicating matters have the fact that Song Zinyu is pushing for the Zhengzhou party to be picked. Owing to their traditionalist agenda, we can overthrow a suggestion, but it'll cost us political power. Yeah, we'll stick with the Manchus. Kurt picked the Manchu party. The Manchu party obviously don't even want Manchu nobility in Beijing. Oh, wait, we've already read that. We'll. Stick with that. Probably should have stuck and gotten this guy. The army experience game. Next time we get a hundred and next time we'll get a bunch of political power for this, and that's when we'll do it. The Manchu Party, cool. We'll default on the debt. Well, while we have created a new government, international creditors do not see things the same way. Our overwhelming international debt will continue to hinder our economic growth until we default on it, harming us in the short term but allowing us to develop in the long term. Yes, we'll go for that and we'll go ahead and get army experience daily. There we go. We need to get that done because we are going to be fighting the League of Eight Provinces at some point. They're already strong and they're going to have the backing of these guys. And we might even end up fighting the Ping King at some point early on. Which would suck. If we stick with these guys, what can we get? Popularity of social conservatism. Conservatism. Changing the location, prepare the coast. Uh, we'll, we'll see. All right, everything all at once. Okay, get some static oil because that needs to get done. Resource efficiency because that's down, and we want reinforce rates so we are ready in case we do start a war that we get stuck in. Yeah, defaulting on the debt's going to hurt, but we have to get rid of it. Wait, does this does this remove like immediately? Trump petitions the central government. They need help, sure. Twenty political power is better than losing the stability. Yeah, we need to make light tanks. I know, I know. infighting, civil fridging in order for various ministries of agricultural spokes, the intense war of contract building, bureaucratic infighting, and general inaction that typifies the lackadaisical Beijing government apparatus. One example today, a particularly exemplifies the corruption, sex of rice have been assembled in Beijing with dispute over which rail company is to actually ship them. Introduced product, a week-long series of negotiations involving kickback, bribes, bizarrely accusation of one company's owner was a homosexual, lots of money is changing hands, only a few grains of rice have actually made it to the hands of the starving presidential of Sichuan. Get on with it. Once we get a military factory, we can start making those. Which is good. For now, let's just stop you from training. This is going up at a decent speed now. So. Acceptable. Can it appears various agriculture ministries are still yet to actually deliver any of the food they have put to Beijing. Sectors of grain sit rotting in the warehouse across the city as peasantry of Sichuan starve. The new government has an opportunity to fix their minds by threatening to fire the ministry in order for different. This will be costly. Pressure them to start working. Yes, we will pressure them to start working. Because we're the good guys. Yeah, we lack any real. Uh... I wonder, did this. Okay, good. This did not get cancelled. We're going to default on the debt. I hope this gets rid of- if this gets rid of it now, 
Jesus. Okay, yeah, we get refugees, plus weekly stability, which is nice. That's not even that bad. Like 5%, yeah, sure. Not fun. I'm not gonna say it is, but we were having 20% construction speed, and that instantly went away, and that kind of cancels each other out. Alright, you know what? We'll get a point new. Uh, Vice Royce, the potential governments employed by the youth were corrupt, ineffective, and worse of all, disloyal to the Emperor. With our newfound power, we can instead appoint Vice for the good, reputable, noble families with a long and successful history of provisional government. We'll go with that. I kind of want to see if we can get weekly stability with that, but eh, it's fine. We have ran out of time for this episode. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.